Hello, I'm Guillermo Martinez, and today we're going to talk about Ayakashlis or rattling sticks. Um, I talked about them in the trine, I mentioned them uh, being the second part of the tri trilogy representing plant, tree, animal, and insect. And I want to go more in depth because uh, most people just do one thing with the rattles, and there's so much more than that. They're actually a very useful instrument and can create a variety of tones, and depending on what kind of rattle you have, you know, um, determines your versatility, basically. For example, the California native cultures, uh, the rattle is their main instrument. Some of them don't even have drums. Uh, they just use rattles. And I'm talking about the bird singers. And um, if you ever get a chance to hear them or, you know, find them on YouTube or something, you'll be quite impressed what they do with the rattles. And they use something like this one. This is a... A tree gourd. Now, calabashes come in two kinds. This one grows in a tree, and like this one is a plant, and it's like a squash. It's a vine. I'm actually growing some here at my house. I have, they take. They're quite large. They get, take over a huge space. I only got four plants, and you know, it seems like they're taking over an acre of space. But um, for example, this one has a nice roll. And the rolling technique is something that is commonly used by uh, tribes in northern Mexico, especially the people that are medicine people, uh, maracames, and, and uh, what people would refer to shamans. I don't like to use that word because um, shamans really refer to people of, of Siberia and the Arctic Circle. Those are the, the people that go in the trance as well and go into other dimensions and they use a drum but the rattle can do the same and but um, just by the simple rolling technique and you know with some chanting and, and rolling you can get yourself out there so that's one technique the other one is the strike That's the other technique. So you got roll, strike. And so you can create patterns with these. And so when I was a dancer, that's how we would actually mark a pattern. Like when it's your turn to lead a dance, you could... Uh, And you could, the drummer could hear that and knows exactly what dance you're asking for, just with that. Or you can just name it out as well. But uh, so the tree gourd or the, and here's a, here's a Hopi one, a little beat up, but it's a gourd. And the sound is a little softer, probably because what's inside the material. This is probably, as, uh, probably corn seeds in there. And, um, Here's the bull kelp one. This one's got a good roll. It's got a good strike. So that's a great one. I like I like rattles that can do both those techniques. Um, this is a highly specialized one. This is uh, used for the Native American church. This one actually comes apart. Has a top part. This. Uns pops out really easily, not right now, but it does, because I've made sure, and I put some stones in there. And this is where actually the number of stones, the kind of stones you put in are important, and the size. And when the people that use these, they, they keep their stones in a separate little pouch. And they, uh, yeah, they do, these are, Quite interesting and I have a very old one here this one comes in this nice parfletch case parfletch meaning rawhide see it's painted it's a very old technique but this is also Native American church rattle see all the beadwork a lot of work but they used a little little tin can little you know probably a juice can of some kind and uh, somehow put it back together where they just made a hole in the center, got whatever was inside out, cleaned it, and...
Nice roll, nice strike. Now these I usually see in the what they call the gore dance, which is um, at the beginning of a powwow. Usually they have the warrior, the warrior societies, or the men that were veterans of war, um, are in the armed services. They they're um, they're allowed to dance first. They do the the first opening dances, the gore dances, and the men usually stand in place. And it's they're really um, interesting to watch. I like watching them. I like looking at the rattles and the regalia. But this is a very old one. Uh, I wouldn't. I would hate to date this, but uh, I think maybe looking at the beadwork, you know, bet, uh, someone knows a little bit more than me probably can date it better. But I would say. 1940s, 1950s for this rattle. Also considering the, the way the case is and the design work. This was a prized possession for some person at one time and somehow got passed on to me and I use it on occasion. And um, one more rattle here. Uh, the Finavides or the butterfly cocoons. Now these inside have anthill stones. These are gathered after the butterfly, the monarchs leave the, the cocoons and the cocoons are there, they gather them, they, they collect them, and then they, they, I think they clean them, they gather the ant hill stones and then they sew them onto a piece of cloth. And these would wrap around your ankles and these are, have a nice soft sound. And for musicians, these are quite useful. And, and then we have the rawhide rattle. Or, now these are the ones I, I do with crystals. These have a, a nice strike, also have a roll, but they have the, the added benefit of the, the crystals that are inside. And um, there is one technique which, if, if I had a really good uh, gourd rattle, maybe I could do it with this one where you can get just one stone. There we go. Just one stone to twirl around. And if you're good, you can, you can go from, you can alternate from one to all of them. And that becomes really useful in, a, in a meditation because you can, you can focus on that. And there's one of these that actually can be used on a drum. And that's the rawhide one. Because you're skin on skin, as long as you don't use the seam, you can take your drum. So as long you know, as long as you're not too aggressive, I do nail these in so that way they're strong and they don't break on you. But um, just don't get too aggressive. But it's the only one you can use. Like the other ones, you can the bull kelp will crack, gourd rattles will crack. You know, there's a turtle shell rattle which I haven't shown yet. This one, you know, these are has a very unique sound. Very different, very soft. Some can be really good. I, I've made these before as well, and they've they can be really nice. But um, hopefully, this will be helpful for you and give you a little understanding of what's out there. And um, you know, those of you who are uh, starting to put together a collection of instruments and using them in a practice of some kind, you know, take this information and and you know see what resonates with you and something you might want to acquire. And like it, you know, it's always best to to make it yourself. Um, but not everyone can do that, you know. So for those for those of you that are lacking skills, I think it's a good uh, something to think about. You know, acquiring skills is an important thing. You know, um, it's been important for me. You know, it's my my lifelong. Thing I've been doing is collecting information and knowledge and skills and techniques and helping me put these instruments together and um, and look out for my patreon channel and hopefully there'll be some stuff on there 
you know, a rattle making class. I think I'm going to be doing this one for sure, maybe a gourd one. Uh, a lot of these materials will be available, can be sourced online, and with a few basic tools, you can make some of your own stuff. Okay, take care. Hope you enjoyed it.